whole idea of the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. The significance of why Jesus had to be crucified. So I've got to take you from Luke right now all the way back to Genesis. Okay, okay. come on. Break it now, down. in Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. He created the birds, the insects. He created the fish. He created the sun, the moon, the stars. And he put, he put everything in this big, beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. All right. And he put two trees there that we know of specifically. Mm -hmm. The tree of life mm -hmm. and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there were all kinds of fruit trees around there. He gave man everything man would need. Mm -hmm. He created all of this stuff for man, and then he decided to create his prized possession, all right. which was man. And I think I told you before that God, the creation of man is the only creation that God actually put his hands on. Mm -hmm. Everything else he said, let there be and there was, but this particular creation, man is the one that he stooped down and grabbed clay and molded it into his image shaping it into his image and his likeness. And then not only that, but God blew the breath of life in him. And the Bible says man became a living soul. So man was God's prized possession. And so God created all of this garden so that man would have everything that man would need. And God said everything in the garden, just all of the fruit you can eat except for one tree. That one tree you cannot touch. Because in the day that you touch that one tree, you're going to die. And sin enters the world. They had all the other trees. You ever wonder why they never tasted on the tree of life, tree of life earth? They had all of these fruit trees around there, but they decide. Now, I also, I also have to ask the question of why was Eve at that tree anyway? <laughs> There was no need for her to be at that tree. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, the serpent tricked Eve into eating that fruit. Mm -hmm. And then sin entered the world. And all of a sudden, everything starts to degrade when sin enters the world. Mm -hmm. Everything starts to deteriorate. Everything starts to die. Yes. But the most important thing that happened on that day, when Adam and Eve ate that fruit, is the relationship with God and Adam and Eve was severed. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember the story? God used to come down in the cool of the day yeah. and walk with Adam and talk with Adam and just have a good communion conversation mm -hmm. and a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now all of a sudden, that's no more. Mm -hmm. Because God is a holy God. Yeah. And he can't be around sin. Mm -hmm. And so now that relationship is severed. And there is nothing, there is only one thing that can fix that relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So Jesus had to sacrifice himself yes. so that we can regain that relationship with God. All right. We were lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you really think about it, eating that fruit cost us way too much. Yes. Yes. If you really think about it, Finding out the knowledge of good and evil cost us more than we were really willing to pay. Because we were immortal. We would never die, but we ate that fruit. Mm -hmm. We had a relationship with God, but we ate that fruit. Yeah. We lived in a beautiful garden <clears throat> with all the things and amenities that we would need, but we ate that fruit. Yeah. It cost us way too much. So now Jesus has to fix what we've broken. And so Jesus is in the process on this cross. And on this cross, he has two things on either side of him. Now, if you look at Matthew and Mark and you read those two, you'll find out that both of the thieves were talking noise at first. Then when you get to Luke, you find out it was only one of them. That means to me that somebody had to make a change while on that cross. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Somebody finally understood what was going on on that cross. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that in Matthew and Mark, you'll find both robbers railing on Jesus 
and, 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 and they'll say things like, if you can get yourself down, get us down too. Mm. But in Luke, it's only one of them saying that. And in Luke, the first robber says, uh, 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 he, says to, he says to Jesus, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Mm -hmm. And I was reading that and I was thinking to myself, dummy, he is. He's saving you too. He's saving us all. He's in the process. Now, listen. Both of them were railing on him, but all of a sudden, one decided no longer. What I like about it is you look at the change that happens, the change that takes place with one of the robbers on that tree. And the, the second robber, on, on, on the other hand, he says, I, he says, he looks at Jesus on that cross, and he has to make a choice. And he made the choice to look at what was going on. Mm -hmm. He made a choice to see what Jesus was actually doing. He made a choice to notice that the only thing this man had ever done was help people. Mm -hmm. The only thing that this man had ever done was love people. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The only thing that this man had ever done was heal people. The only thing, the only crime he's guilty of is loving too much. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. He made a choice to see that Jesus didn't rob people. He didn't kill people. All he did was love people. Yes. Yet he was dying on a cross. Mm -hmm. yes. He made a choice to realize that there must be something to this man. Mm -hmm. Something he didn't see before, but something he can see now. <laughs> he made a choice. Isn't that awesome? Listen, let me, let me tell y'all something. This is, this, is, this is an ongoing battle today. Believe it or not, if you really take that scene on the cross, on the one side you got people saying, if you're really the Christ, and you have people in this world saying, if God is really God, why is he making this world be the way it is? Mm. Why not save us all? Why not stop all of the murdering and all that stuff? And then you got people on the other side saying, dummy, don't you see? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's saving us all. Yes. He saved us all. Yes. He spilt his blood to save us all. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's one thing, though, to notice the sacrifice. In the beginning, these robbers were railing on Jesus, but then one of them decided to take a deeper look and notice what Jesus was doing. Mm -hmm. Notice that this was a man dying for no reason of his own. Mm -hmm. Notice that all of the stuff he actually said was real. <laughs> Notice that he said that they were going to sacrifice me, that they were going to kill me. Knowing that he said all of these things and finally seeing it happen. But there's one thing to actually notice it. It's a whole different thing to actually choose it. The thief, no, he noticed what Jesus was doing. But it wasn't until the thief actually decided to accept that which he did. Jesus came to save us all. Yes, he did. But only the ones who accept the sacrifice will be saved. That's right. That's right. But only the ones who accept what he's done. The second robber saw the sacrifice being made and he decided to accept the sacrifice that Jesus was making. He says, look here. I deserve to be on this cross. Mm -hmm. I have done some wrong things. I've done some foul things. I know that I'm not good. I know that I'm, I'm way less than perfect. Yes, yes. And then he finally, he takes that inner look at himself and he says, I know that I can't save myself. So he looks at Jesus and he says, when you get to your kingdom, yes, yes. could you please yes. remember me? Yes. He says, we deserve to be here. That's right. I deserve to be on this cross. But Jesus, I heard what you said. Yes. And since you're going to your kingdom, when you get to your kingdom, can you remember me? Yes. I know I'm not perfect. 
I know I've done things that I was supposed to do. But Jesus, when you get to where you're going, yeah. can you remember mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. The thief had an epiphany. Yeah. <coughs> and guess what? We gotta hit the same road. Yeah. That's right. We've got to go down the same road the thief went down. And that we've got to realize that we are way less than perfect. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we got to get a new measuring stick. Let me explain that. I can't measure myself against daddy. Daddy just is following me. Oh, I mean, it's okay, daddy. <laughs> I can't measure myself against my wife. Yeah. She just as foul as me. That's right. She may not do what I do, but she do other things. And so I have to find a new measuring stick. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that measuring stick is God. And that measuring stick says that I am so far beneath God yeah. that I am nowhere near the holiness yes. that he wants me to be at that yes. I can't save myself. Yes. That's right. And I have to say, God, I deserve hell. For everything that I've done, I deserve hell. But God, listen, when you get to your place, mm. <coughs> can you please remember me? <laughs> the thief said, I know where I am. And I know I don't deserve to ask this. Yeah. But listen, what's that saying? A closed mouth never get fed. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the thief could have been up there saying, I don't deserve it. He ain't going to do it. Never mind. I ain't going to say nothing. Or he could ask the question. Yeah. Right. And be saved in that moment. Yeah. But here's the thing. The thief said, Jesus, when you get to your kingdom, Will you remember me? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answers the question. And here's the funny thing. When Jesus answers the question, I don't think people take into context what he had to go through to say what he said. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Crucifixion. You die from, when, you, when you're crucified, you die from, ex I can't say that word. Asphyxiation. That's right. That means you suffocate. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you ask yourself the question, how can you suffocate on a cross uh -huh. when your body is standing upright? There's nobody covering your breathing ways. How can you cru how can you suffocate? But the fact of the matter is when you're crucified uh -huh. and you notice that they bend your legs, when you're crucified, in order to take a breath, You've got to raise your body up mm -hmm. to breathe in. Mm -hmm. And after you've been there so long, it's harder and harder to raise your body up to breathe in, let alone talk. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus was going to answer this man, he had to raise his body up, deal with that excruciating pain in his feet and in his arms just to say, okay, you're coming with me. Mm -hmm. Just to say, at this day, you're going to be, be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. In order for Jesus to answer, he had to go through pain. Mm, wow. When Jesus loves, it doesn't really matter about the pain. Mm -hmm. When Jesus loves, it doesn't really matter that he had to go through this or that. What matters is whether or not you understand how much I love you. For Jesus, what matters is whether or not you understand that I'm doing this because I love you. Yes. Yes. My daughter had her baby, and she was in the hospital, and we had some issues. My, my daughter is, I mean, I, can I say it? <laughs> she a crybaby. I'm going to say it. I said it. I said it. And my, my sisters were there. My, my wife was there, her, uh, her, the, the boyfriend, his mom was there. They were there. And the man had to give her a, um, what you call that thing in the back? Epidural. Epidural. Now, this pain is going on because she's in labor. And the man has to give her epidural. And, in the, and here's the problem. He couldn't get it in her because every time he would try to get it in her, she would move. Right? And so I'm thinking to myself, oh, Lord, she ain't going to be able to get this epidural. She's going to go through all this pain. She's going to have to go through it all. And as I was thinking to myself about that, 
after she goes through all of that pain. Mm -hmm. The moment that Carter comes out, mm -hmm. that pain is gone. Mm -hmm. She hadn't thought about that pain anymore. And the whole point of saying that is this. Jesus went through that pain yeah. so that he could show this love towards us. Right. And every time we accept that sacrifice that Jesus has made, Jesus doesn't think about the pain anymore. All he thinks about is one more person that came on home. All he thinks about is one more person who accepted what I've done. All he sees is another child coming, to, coming back to God. Because you've got to remember, the whole point of the whole thing was because God said, I need somebody to go down yes. and make this right. Yes. And Jesus says, send me, Daddy. Yes. I'll go. Yes. And in Jesus going down to make this right, mm -hmm. every soul that comes back to God mm -hmm. is a win-win. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I'm going to conclude with this. Jesus came here to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, people, we were lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were lost. Yeah. We needed his love to come and rescue us. Mm -hmm. yes. And here's what I like about Jesus. When Jesus comes to rescue, you ain't never got to go through that again. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. When Jesus comes to rescue, he does it for good. Mm -hmm. That's right. There ain't a chance at all that you can't be saved. Mm -hmm. The only way you can't be saved is if you didn't ask to be saved. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's all in your court. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus came and rescued. <coughs> and in the moment that Jesus was on that cross and he spoke to that thief <coughs> and I thought about how much pain he had to go through and what he had to endure just to say, today you're going to be with me in paradise. I thought about how much God loves even the thieves yes. and the robbers. Mm -hmm. yes. And I thought to myself, well, if he loved the thieves and the robbers, how much more so he loved me. <laughs> and I thought to myself, he must really love me in all of my dirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought, he must really care about me, even though I seem to mess up all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, well, if he cares about me, even though I seem to mess up all the time, he must be a real good daddy. Because mm -hmm. that's what daddies do. Daddies care about you and love you even though you mess up. Mm -hmm. Even though you don't do things right, they still love you. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about that love and I said, my wife loves me. Mm -hmm. And I said, and she loves me hard. What that means is she'll do anything for me, mm -hmm. right? And I said, but even that doesn't compare mm -hmm. That's right. to what God will do for me. That's right. That's right. Even that doesn't compare to how hard God actually loves us. That's right. That's right. Say that. I tried to quantify it and put it in words. Mm -hmm. And I can't seem to find the right word. That will make all understand mm -hmm. how much God loves us. But I can say this. When he loves, he goes all in. Yes, he does. That's right. When Jesus loves, he loves with salvation in mind. Mm. He loves with mending our relationship with God in mind. Yes. He loves with reclaiming us as his own in mind. Understand, Jesus loves through sacrifice. <laughs> We husbands and wives could take a few notes from that in that Jesus loves mm -hmm. through sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You want to show your wife how much you love them, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You want to show your husband how much you love them, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves through sacrifice. So on that road to Calvary, mm -hmm. as I'm watching and looking and reading the text and in my imagination, in my mind, I see Jesus walking down that road with his cross. And I see him saying to himself, this is for so and so. Mm -hmm. Each step I take is for somebody yes, else. Right. And each step I take is for somebody yes, else. Yes. And each time I move forward, God, I'm doing what you said do. Yes. 
and I'm going to bring all of your children back to you. Yes, yes. I can see as they put the nails in his hands and in his feet that I can see him saying, this is for so-and-so, yes, yes. and this is for so-and-so, and this pain I'm feeling is only for a short time. Yes. But when I finish, yes. when I finish, everyone will be able to be saved. Mm -hmm. And that relationship will be mended. Mm -hmm. There is a right. song. And that song says, he loves me. The name of the song is he loves me. And the song says, he is jealous for me. Yes. That essentially means he, he, he don't want nobody else to feel, he don't want nobody else to grab my attention. Mm -hmm. He wants full, my full attention. Mm -hmm. He's jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. Yeah. You know a hurricane, you can't stand in that wind. Mm -hmm. It just hits you and makes you fall, makes you go backwards, and, and, and makes you move. Yeah. Says love's like a hurricane, and I'm a tree bending beneath the waves of his wind and his mercy. Mm -hmm. That's right. I can't help but to move with all of this love coming my way. Yeah. Yeah. He says, and all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions that were saved by glory. Mm. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Yeah. Bottom line is this. It's easy to give your life to God. Give your life to God and accept the sacrifice that Jesus made when you know how great his affections are mm -hmm. for you. That's right. That's right. When we finally <coughs> understand yes. how much right. God loves us, mm -hmm. yeah. it's easy to put it all in his hands, mm -hmm. to give him complete control of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because people who love me want hurt People who love me want the best for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People who love me will always steer me in the right direction. Yes. People who love me will always take good care of me. Mm -hmm. And can nobody take no better care than God himself. No. That's right. That's right. When Jesus <laughs> loves, he loves with the understanding that can't nobody else do it like I can. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> If you want that love of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. all we have to do is accept the sacrifice he's made. Yes. God bless you. Amen.